Hi, my name is Eric Kalita. I'm a developer advocate at Coda, and today I want to talk to you about dogs. More specifically, puppies. You see, International Puppy Day is right around the corner, and I'm here looking at my team hub doc. Great, it's organized, it helps our team get work done, but it's missing a certain je ne sais quoi that I think a puppy or a dog would really lighten up this doc, make us a little bit happier every day we have to start that meeting. So let's see what we can do about that. Now, I could throw just a single dog image in here. That's great. But where's the freshness? Where's the exciting? But we can make a pack that'll randomly bring in a dog every single day to make our doc that much more exciting. How do we do that? Well, first, we're going to need some way to get dog photos. It turns out there's a dog API. Of course there is. With this API, we just make a simple request to this URL, and we'll get a random dog image given to us in JSON format. This is a really nice, simple API we can use to build a pack around. Now, building a pack, that sounds hard and scary. Oh, no, no, no. It can actually be done in just a couple minutes. Let's do one live right now. So in your browser, you can type pack.new, and here we're introduced to the Pack Studio Editor, where we can start making our pack. Now, there's already a cat photos one there, but let's skip that and just start fresh. I want to show you how quickly we can do it, even without an existing template. So this is our standard boilerplate pack code. And to this, we want to add a formula that gets us a random dog image. Let's do it. Slash formula, and I'll choose string, because I know I want to return the URL of the image. Next up, let's give this new formula a name. I'll choose random dog and some help text. I'll say gets random dog photo. We, we don't need any parameters because we're just going to get one completely random. We don't have any say in the matter. And we do want to return a string that's going to be the URL of our image, but we need to tell Coda via the Coda type option how it should handle this URL, this string that comes back. So we're going to say use the hint image reference, which means I'm going to give you a reference to an image out there on the internet. Display it as an image, please. So that's the metadata we need for this formula. Now let's write the actual coding portion. So as I mentioned, there's no parameter. We can delete that. And here is where we need to go fetch that random dog image. So we can go back to our docs over here and we can copy the URL that we need. That's down over here. And we're going to need to get that data. And to do that, we can use slash fetch. Now it's not throwing a ball for the dog. That is going and getting information from the internet. So we're going to get request to get information. And we're going to pass in the URL that we just copied. So that's going to give us back in this data object down here this structure, this JSON structure. Now, what we actually need is what's over here under message. That's where the URL lives. So our last and final step is to return data.message. And that should do it. Now, there's one more thing we need to do here, which is all packs must declare what domains they are connecting to on the internet so that users have transparency and visibility into where their data is going. So we're going to say we're connecting to the dog.ceo domain. All right, let's hit the build button. This is going to take that pack code, build it, compile it, package it, send it to code as servers. And then all you can see, our pack is ready to test. Let's create a test doc. This is going to give us a brand new doc where we can quickly experiment with our pack. And you can see it opens right here. There's a new random dog formula. If I drag it in, the very first time a pack runs, it takes just a minute for it to warm up and get booted up on our servers. Every time after that, it goes quite a bit faster. And there we can see a random dog photo has been added to our doc. Let's add one more for fun. Hmm. Now you may be thinking, these two dogs look remarkably similar. That's because our randomness is not so random currently. What's going on here is that Coda's caching layer, which is meant to speed up your packs and docs, is actually getting in our way a little bit. It's not letting us be as random as one. So let's get rid of these images and go fix that. But back to our pack code, I know from previous experience that to turn off that caching, there is an option called cache TTL seconds. That if I set to zero, says do not cache this result at all. I need to apply that both to my fetch request so that I get fresh data from the internet, as well as to my formula to say, don't remember the, value, the result of this formula, always calculate it new. So to deploy that updated change is just as easy as it was the first time. Hit that build button and wait for the code to get compiled and deployed. You can see a version two of our pack is done. And over here in our doc, we have already been upgraded to version two automatically. So let's try again a new dog photo. 
Once again, the first run of a new version of a pack will also take just a few seconds longer. Let's get going, but then it'll be speedy after that. All right, look at that cutie. But what happens when we drag in the second dog? Uh, yes, two different dogs. That is our goal. I think this pack is working. But a working pack is not necessarily a done pack. As you can see, our pack is currently called Untitled, like a little icon of a puzzle piece. I think we can do a bit better than that. So to jazz up our pack, let's go to our listing page and fill out some information. So I'll call this the Dog Photos Pack. Tagline will be get a random dog photo. And I've already got some assets that I've pre-downloaded here, including an icon of a dog and a photo we can use as a cover photo of some puppies. There we go. Now I can add more descriptions and information below, but this is enough just to show you the basics. Hit save at the bottom there, and it's gonna finish uploading all of your listing materials. I can then click this little square to see how my pack would look in the gallery. Now, it looks like it's published, but this is actually just a preview, but I can send this page around to anyone who has access to my pack, anyone I've shared it with. If I share it to, let's say, just a colleague or even my whole workspace, I can show them this page and they can start using the pack as well. All right, so we've got a working pack. Let's do the final step and integrate it here into our Team Hub. So here, hi, we're Team Awesome. It'd be great if right away I land in here, I get a nice fresh dog photo. So first I need to install the pack. We actually have easy access to that in the slash menu. So I can type in slash random dog and you can see my dog photo pack came up. And there you go, with one click, this pack is installed and ready to use in my doc. And I can actually just, I can drag in a dog again or the, that's, that is a formula. Anytime I'm in the formula editor, editor, I can also type in random dog and there it is alongside all of the much more mathematically oriented formulas. I hit enter and I complete my formula. I'm greeted with a random dog. Isn't that wonderful? Now I can, this is gonna stay the exact same dog until I add a new one. And I don't wanna have to constantly do that every day. But if I wanna make it automatically refresh, I can just go to my dog pack and there's an option here under settings that says, let me refresh this formula every hour or day. And I'll say, you know what? Once a day, give me a brand new dog. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna rerun that, that formula and give me a fresh new photo. And there we go. Our team hub has a little bit more fun inside of it. And I hope you feel inspired to build your own packs and improve the docs that you work with every day. Until next time, thanks so much.